so welcome to my latest trip I'm off to the Alps uh, riding through France Belgium Germany Italy Switzerland and Austria we've got 13 nights 10 hotels and must be at least 20 plus Alpine passes planned out good as you can probably see so we've got 185 miles approximately in five hours but it's gonna be full wets today I think and uh, I may keep the filming to a minimum because it's not gonna be that interesting if you're gonna just see us riding in the rain really anyway catch up with you later Hundred and eighty five miles roughly to our next stop in Bellinzona, Switzerland, which should take about five hours, but as it's chucking it down, uh, the forecast is not brilliant, but let's see how it goes. It could change over in the next pass, but at the moment it's looking uh, slow. We're just heading towards this lake and then we're going through the known as the Top Gear Tunnel. Uh, it's a 3.5 kilometer single lane tunnel through to Switzerland it's about 12 euros I believe uh, but it does cut out a blimmin long ride around to get us heading in the direction we want and it's going to be quite dramatic down here but uh, yeah it's not gonna be great today well there's a lake but there's not a lot of water left in it not like the Google pictures I've seen and I believe that there's a paid booth on this side of the tunnel which takes apparently there's only one person usually in it taking tolls from people on both directions so it can take a while plus the fact obviously it's uh, got traffic lights system because it's single lane so if you're unlucky you could wait up to about 20 minutes for the flow of traffic to change in your favour but let's see how we go. Um, ahead we've got uh, Vivian and Dave on the uh, GS1200 and uh, Wayne on his KTM adventure at the front. So just the three of us. So we're meant to be going through several passes, the Fluella, the Julia, the Albula. Anyway, that's the plan. Let's see how it works out. The mileage directly is not hugely do well you could uh, save about an hour and a half apparently and about 50 miles but what's the fun in that eh all right we'll catch up later hopefully as this is a bit damp i'll probably keep let's give the lens a wipe uh, so we've just finished uh, coming through these galleried tunnels for about three or four kilometers i suppose and i guess because there's no traffic coming across we've just missed the uh, opportunity to go through there was 12 euros for bikes and 25 euros for a car Woo. How much for a car? 25 euros oh 25 euros both ways 15 euros one way mm, that is quite narrow isn't it Oh, it's lit. Well, I didn't expect it to be lit, actually. Let's look a few pickaxes. So we're now in Switzerland. And I'm told they sometimes check to make sure you've got a vignette 
for riding in Switzerland at some point. He's checked, he's happy. Straight off we go. So we've come out at the bottom of the uh, valley from that, look at it, more or less dry roads, stop raining. Just got to clear the visor now, so let's see what we're doing. Looks a lot more promising this side. And that's what riding the mountains is all about. You never know, it's going to get worse or better. So we're just entering the Fluella. All raging rivers. So you give the lens a wipe, just in case we're a bit clagged up. So we're just coming to the village of Stush and we're just about to turn left up the Fluella Pass through, I guess. Concentrate, Paul. Davos and the Fluella Pass. Davos 28 Cloms. Traffic lights, excellent, just what you want on a, on a hill. We seem to have a lot of traffic lights around. I suppose it's Saturday, so they're not doing any bloody work either. Hopefully at the top there'll be a coffee stop and I can get the other cameras on and get a bit more variety into these shots. For now, let's just enjoy the ride. It's a bit light on the front. Skipped a little bit across there. This is a bit higher up the Fluella Pass. Starting to rain a bit more up here. Is there a coffee shop? I suppose it's rainy now, so I don't need to put cameras on really. But it's a bit bleaker up here. Don't think I've ever done this one before. I'm not quite sure what's at the top here. Sure ain't for photographic weather. Right, let's give the lens a rub. Wash basin area, toilet and shower cubicle in here, a nice uh, storage area, plenty of, not much light in here is there, but um, nice little area to use as my media bench and then you've got view out onto fields and the mountains albeit via the power cables at the back. At the front, less attractive because there's a service station there, plenty of parking. Um, let's hope it's also next to a main road, but as we're at the back, don't think that's going to be a problem. 
and this hotel is the first one that I've come across with USB charging points. So we're just leaving Bellinzona. We've got 313 kilometres up to Weges in Switzerland. Have a good ride guys. I think Wayne's forgotten about the speed limit along here. And um, because of the Tour de Suisse, uh, we'd had a route that was going to go sort of northish through about four different passes. So we've uh, avoided the Tour de Suisse area, rerouted, and we're going to go more easterly. Um, so as tomorrow is a second stroke day off in Weges, uh, we've rerouted that day. We're going to come back and do the four or so passes like the Furka, the Susten and things like that, if I remember rightly, on that day. But anyway, today it's uh, 22 degrees, it's 9 o'clock, it's bright sunshine today, which is a nice change from yesterday. The weather app says it's going to be 30-ish, 31, 32 today, and it's going to get warmer this week. And here we are in the village of Aquila. I thought you might like to see this to break up the little trip as we head up into the hills. It's been northwest, straight northeast. Into the hairpins. Here we go. The Luco Magno Pass. This is where we go. Super views up here. Pretty epic up here. The reservoir. On it. Yeah. Gonna do a little bit of major camera work here. That one's on. Get a bit of camera footage down this lovely valley here. Let's see how this works out now the police have gone.
or stop at a coffee shop if you see one. Yeah. So on our map, I'm just heading towards the uh, Clausen Pass, which is going to be one big pass before we get up to Weggis in Switzerland. So I thought I'd just give you a look at the uh, approach and then we'll get into the meat of the matter in a short time, but what a day. But it's 27.5 degrees at the moment, but it feels like about 35. Thousand pass, one to do. Come on. Well, it's a little, nice little pass, a little smaller than some of the other ones. I'm glad we came this way.
So that was uh, while well, we're just finishing off the bottom of the Clausen. What an awesome pass to do! And as you may see on that, uh, I put it on a five times speed up so that I can show as much of that as possible. There's uh, it's more like a balcony road with minimal guard railing. You sure don't want to go over there because that is going to. I think you've got to count to 100 before you hit the floor there. So we've still got um, 44 kilometres to do. Estimated arrival time just after 5. We've got a current temperature of 23 and a half. Blooming warm. Should warn those, um, you know, the Swiss are blooming tight over speeds here. And uh, apparently anything over 20 kilometers above whatever the speed limit is you can have your bike seized so we've tried to be very careful but like a lot of these things as the day moves on you sort of get into the buzz of the roads so you've got to keep watching with it. I haven't seen many speed cameras but apparently there are a lot we're talking to a Swiss guy at um, a coffee stop and he says yeah cameras everywhere so we'll probably get 54 fines on, on our doorstep when we return fuel consumption 48 miles per the gallon averaging at the moment front brake pads they were fine at uh, 10,000 pounds. Uh, 10,000. At uh, 10,000 miles, I had the uh, tire change, the pair of tires changed. Uh, rear brake pads. I mentioned it before, but if you didn't see those videos and you didn't know, the brakes on these are like a lot of bikes, like the like the KTM, like the BMW. They're semi-linked, so about 10% of the the pressure goes to the rear brakes when you apply the front over a certain pressure which results in a lot of wear on the rear just rear date the rear brake pads have a huge wear rate compared to the front but anyway another 5,000 miles another set of rear brake pads awesome views we're still 24 kilometers out but look at this that I rooted this so it went down the side of the lakes and it's fantastic between these tunnels anyway some are shorter than others so we we just gone through the main town coming along wiggling along the uh, side of the lake we're just on the uh, far side of uh, Vegas and we are 1.4 kilometers from the hotel which I thought you might like to see shut that for a moment It's 5.28, not that turning but the next one. Wow. I think it's up that turning there. There we go, Hotel Friedheim. This is the Hotel Friedheim and this is the 
bedroom and uh, usual bathroom equipment in here but just look at the view from the balcony here and that's Lake Lucerne so we'll catch later with eight o'clock um, dinner outside which should be nice and then we're here for a second night so tomorrow the idea is to go down the passes that were closed to us because of the uh, cycle race catch up with you then We're going. Harry, how have you found the trip? Well, this is my second PMEC trip and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. The first one was 2015 Morocco right? and it's now 2019 and some similar reprobates are on this trip as we're on the Morocco trip. Like John here. Like John and well, like yourself. And yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Organisation's good, hotels are good, food's good, companies. Hotels have been brilliant, haven't they? Definitely, yeah. yes. And the passes, John? Have you enjoyed those? The passes You've have done been some unusual a ones. little bit special for me because I uh, was undecided between one trip or another this year and I chose this one and I must say that um, doing the Stelvio Pass uh, for real rather than the soft side which is the south side, doing the real St Stelvio Pass has proven to me that I have really ticked off something that uh, I and it didn't know I had a list to do, but it is there. It is fantastic. Brilliant. Everything across these Alps have been wonderful roads, and we've had a wonderful time. We've certainly had good yeah. temperatures, other than which is one day, wasn't there? Where it was a bit damp. We, we, we've seen high thirties, I think, today, haven't we? So yeah, and I, I, I agree. I concur that the Stelvio Pass. I got a great sense of achievement completing that without falling off on any of the hairpins. I don't think anybody did actually, so well done to everybody. No, no, well, I tried yeah, that. We I mean, saw it, a gentleman it, on his side. It's but begging, not, not to, one of us. It's yeah. begging to kick people off that. that yeah. It's a tough I mean, one. It, it's 46 curves going up, and I mean, it's just. And for those people watching this, these are all experienced riders. And I think we've all found it quite challenging. Yeah, um, I, I didn't want to go and do it again straight away myself, but I don't know how you felt about it. But when you got to the top, that was probably enough. A stiff drink was needed, I think. I, I think when you do anything that's as hard as that, then the best thing you can do afterwards is celebrate as opposed to set yourself up. Don't for go do it again. The second time. Exactly. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks for your comments. Right, so it's day 10 and uh, Wayne, myself, uh, Tim and Jackie and Dale are going out to do the passes that we were unable to do yesterday. So I'll save most of the editing I think until we get down to the Furka and uh, other passes that we wanted to hit down there. So we'll give you a catch up later on. Just doing a little hop round the northern uh, the A Ro northern A Road, rather than going through the centre of the uh, Wegis town, but to get this lovely view along the road here. Monday morning, glorious. Don't know which one we're going up here, but. Uh, So I think this is the Andermatt. It's not totally clear at the start of it, to be honest, because I think this joins up with several others. But we'll do a little bit of filming anyway. Great view. Pretty dramatic. Look at that.
I think this could be a stop for coffee, I think. Yeah, coffee stop. to get here but once you get here it's nice. So this is the Furka Pass, I love this pass. Wide open vistas. Can't remember which angle we're doing it from here. I've been down here before. It's fantastic. Really like it. Not very technical but uh, great views. about this for a view. Traffic lights there so we're lucky to uh, wheedle our way to the front. If that's a word, wheedle. The other guys have bombed on. I'd set a, a waypoint at the last year up there to stop and have a look at that and take some pictures but uh, I think they were so in the zone that they didn't, well Wayne was leading so he didn't notice the waypoint I think so I hope they get my text or my email to explain why I've been so late. So we've had a bit of lunch, now we're headed back, we've got 80 kilometres back for a 3.30 finish, no need to stop other than fuel preps. Oh, 
hoteltje, dat was. So just a final piece on our way back to the hotel, it's uh, 47 kilometres to go but it's on this A82 so it's not going to be terribly exciting. Well, I'll catch up with you later on but it's been a great day up the uh, passes today, uh, great fun, lovely sunny day. Have you enjoyed your trip so far, yes, David? Very much enjoyed it. Super. And Wayne, what do you think of the trip so far? Tip -tip is it? Okay. Uh, Vivian, would you like to say anything about the trip to the... I've had an absolutely wonderful time. I just wish the weather would cool down a little. Understandable. <laughs> Martin, would you like to say anything about the trip? No. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Rob, have you got any thoughts about what's the best part of the trip so far? Uh, meeting you. That's very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, it's been a great hotel to stay in, and what a view this place has offered us. And uh, the service is fantastic. I mean, it's a five star review from me. Uh, to give you an idea, one of my pet hates is uh, serving food on cold plates. So they warm the plates, even at breakfast, they warm the coffee cups before they uh, bring the coffee out to you. Fantastic! Anyway, we're pressing on to Fashina in Austria now and going up at least the Clausen Pass again and the Silvretta Pass which seems to have loads of wiggles on it can't say I've done that one before so we'll press on and uh, give you an update later on cheers now
So we're down at the bottom of the Clausen. Um, I did a bit of hyper lapse from the bottom to the top and because I've taped it up from this side I didn't bother to do any more filming. So we've got 280 kilometres left to do. That only knocked about 50 kilometres off uh, from the hotel. But it's worth doing the Clausen again. So we'll catch up with you a bit later on. Uh, later we've got the Silvretti. Silvretti. I think I may have mentioned that earlier. It's just uh, Wayne and myself riding. We were nearly the last out due to my editing delays and posting on Facebook. Just entering the village of Saint Anton, which the skiers amongst you will recognise the name. It's 33 degrees. Hello. Thank you. Sticker. Okay. Bye. So the Silvretta starts from here. It's 13, 1350 euros. It's 30 degrees here. Let's see what it is up. It's lovely in the tunnel just before the toll booth. Oh, so chilly and lovely. Never been up here before, so it should be interesting. Look at the views here, this is fantastic. I was making my ears pop. Bin 22. Wasn't very attractive photograph there with all the roadworks. Let's try and get it from the other end. There must be a photo stop up here somewhere we can uh, get a good pick. Right, we'll continue. Bit of a photo stop and uh, comfort break. No idea how far this goes. We're just going to carry on and go to the top. We've got to crack on ready with our ride. Get to the hotel. This is fun though. I don't know how much card memory I've got left. So I've only got uh, the cards in the camera left at the moment. Got to wait for a storage unit to be uh, sent to the next hotel. Didn't realise that three cameras would use quite as much. Another reservoir up here. Epic. Worth coming up here. over 2,000 metres if I remember rightly. I think I put it on the post but uh, I'll put it up on the screen here somewhere. Possibly see it on a post through here somewhere. More hairpinage.
so that's the other toll for that end but I'll let this camera run I think so 119 kilometers from here to forgot where we're going now Bathroom with a uh, maiden on the wall. Entrance hall. What do we have in here? Oh my goodness, there's a separate bedroom here. Snoring room in there. A little bit of a balcony situation going on here. Oh, terrible view. Look at that. There's the view of Fashina. We've had a long day, 200 plus miles, and uh, it's been up to 33 degrees. Oh, a snoring room! That's fantastic! I know, snoring room. So anyway, good catch up now. We're off to... We're going to the Schlumpf Museum tomorrow, near... Um, where's it near? Oh, Mill House, where they've got a massive collection of Bugattis that were seized by the state when uh, the owners couldn't pay their tax. Nick, one of one of the organizers. One of the organizers. Hello. And Paul, how are you what, doing? What, what, how do you think the uh, trip has gone? I think Johnny has gone very, very well. We have an eclectic range of hotels, from motorway service stations to uh, chic. Is it chic? Quirky, 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 sorry, quirky, quirky chic hotels like this. But it is, it's the company. <laughs> of course. So Christine, what was your highlight? My highlight. Well, my low light was rising in in thirty something degrees. Today, it's challenging. Um, well, the passes, yeah, the Furka Pass, the Grimsel Pass. So we've just left the uh, sport hotel Domig at uh, Fashina. It's quarter to nine and uh, 24 degrees C. It's going to be warm. Yeah, I can't get a signal on the GPS and I don't think Wayne can either. It's just the two of us riding today. Uh, this could be the last piece to camera for a little while because I've run out of uh, space to save any of my filming bit of a, a newbie mistake here but with three cameras it can take up a lot of space and now all of the cameras are full except this one day before yesterday I therefore decided with Wi-Fi uh, hotels being marginal at least that wasn't really going to be any good to have a cloud-based system so I ordered via Amazon yes Amazon if you're listening a uh, four terabyte USB drive for backing up put the screen up a bit so it's a bit quieter um, paid for next day delivery and uh, get to the hotel yesterday last night and blew me down there's nothing there in fact I then got an email saying they weren't going to deliver it that day so I don't know what one day delivery means to Amazon but it's not one day delivery I realise I'm out in Austria but hey if they can't do it one day 
ought to bloody well tell you you can't do it one day. So now I'm left with no extra storage facility. I know it's my fault. I, I realise I should have forward planned this. But it's darned annoying when you spent out quite a bit of money for a four terabyte drive. And I'm now going to have to wait. It's, the annoying thing is I've discovered this morning, doing a bit of research, that it's probably in the Austrian postal system at a depot about an hour north of here, more or less in the direction of where we're passing. But can you actually contact anybody? Can you hell? Yeah, the, the amusing, <laughs> the amusing email said, bearing in mind it's now the, it was meant to arrive on the 25th, I think it's the 26th today. Um, if it hasn't arrived by the 5th of July, please get in contact with us. The 5th of July. <laughs> it's one day. Oh, anyway, all right. Calm down. So I've now got to wait for it to be delivered to the hotel, spend more money making a, a, a nice donation to the manager of the hotel to reparcel it up or re package it or do whatever you gotta do, stick a sticker on it and send it to my home address in the UK. So it probably will arrive about the 5th of July, but not through Amazon's help. Rant's over. Okay. I think uh, we know yeah, we're en route. So we're off to the Schlumpf Museum of Bugattis in uh, Mulhouse, near Mulhouse, in Mulhouse, around there, Mulhouse, France because it's only a short distance from our hotel tonight and because I wanted to see it. Had to give you a quick shot of this uh, pass that's from the uh, from the hotel going sort of northwest. This is the Furka Jock or Yok. Furka Yok. Amazing views from the top. Wiggly windy route through this sort of countryside good sort of farmland ski land huge loads of ski resorts around here so anyway we'll catch up later i hope you enjoyed the video uh, if i don't post any more uh, please subscribe uh, if you haven't already done so click the button the bell button to make sure you get notifications when new uh, content is added thank you for all the recent subscribers great to have you with me and i'll try and post more content in due course thanks for your help thanks for your subscriptions uh, it'll all help to grow the channel uh, if you haven't subscribed pl please click the like button if you did so quick whiz round of the room while we're waiting for Wayne. Oh, if I look a bit warm that's because it's 40 degrees centigrade out there and the last 40 kilometers was interesting after the schlumpf. So in here this is a single bed that leads into here, table etc. Rather bright wall coverings and in here there's a twin room and massive wardrobe and in here let's swivel this around you have the usual equipment which i don't need to explain to you i'm sure excellent okay well it's time for a shower now so catch up with you later <laughs> what do you think of uh, the trip then 
It's been a being an organiser. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a very just good, good. Yeah. very good chance of getting some maintenance done on the bike. New break. Yeah. 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 We did wear them out. Serviced by a Harley dealership. I have. I have. Okay. But um, a good group as well. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice group. How could you commend this sort of trip to people who are thinking of coming? If you like staying in, uh, if you like good company, um, and you like uh, going places and seeing different things, but being fairly independent. Hold on. What's going on? <laughs> oh, all right, carry on. Sorry, it's just the things gone blank on the back. I'll cut that bit. If you like, carry on. Um, and uh, you like being fairly independent, but enjoy coming to a hotel at the end of the day to meet up with everybody else and swap yeah. with them. The club's just for you. So. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you. through of the hotel because of the temperature we're going to head for the old rings circuit near to our next hotel night um, we've decided to do a more direct shorter faster route because the temperature is likely to be as high as yesterday sort of 35 to 40 degrees which is not comfortable really so we're going to do that, but I don't want to miss the Reams circuit point. So I want to get my archetypal picture there uh, with the bike beside the road. So we'll catch up with you later. Okay, so it's half past eight. We're just, this is day three. 13. We're just leaving the village of Turkheim, heading for Soissons, about halfway towards the coast. We've decided, because the temperature is just going to be stupid again today, it's 28 and a half degrees C now, 8.30 in the morning. So our other, our original route would have been six and a half hours 260 miles and that's mostly sort of d roads n roads etc so we're going the more direct route which is going to be 250 odd miles and five hours so we're going to ride through the vosges and then pick up the n stroke a roads whatever it is going north so Wayne's leading because my sat nav electrical point is not is not playing ball again today. And then we've got uh, Dave and Vivian behind on the BMW GS 1200. All right, well, we'll pick up with you a bit later on. We're just deciding which way to go by the looks of it. Usual sat nav situations in the morning. So I'll show you a bit of Vosges when we get there. So there's a typical Vosges countryside here. Hopefully it's going to be quite uh, comfortable going through the Vosges because there's all sorts of tree cover to give us some good shade. Anyway, just thought you'd like to see a little bit of this Vosges. It's a main road-ish, obviously, just trying to make up time. But uh, nevertheless, nice and pretty. Quite forested through here, as you can see, if you've never been to the Vosges before renowned biker area roads good not too much traffic 
and beautiful countryside. What more do you want? So we're just approaching the Reims Grandstands. So this used to be part of the circuit, clearly. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The world I uh, have uh, changed. Right, that's our little visit and uh, met that young man who's been following us and uh, he'd been following us for a bit of a play because he finished work at uh, 2 o'clock followed us down here and uh, just got myself a new subscriber huh. well, Another little dream fulfilled Put that down Right, so we're off to the hotel now. It's uh, ooh, 52 kilometres from here. Whew. Temperature, you interested? Probably not, but it's 35 at the moment. So we are just arriving at the Best Western Hotel, somewhere around here in Swassels, if that's how you pronounce it. Looks like that's red place there, maybe. So here we go, we're just leaving the best Western Plus. Let's get out of here. My well, sat nav power has failed again. So uh, Wayne's going to lead us to Calais, I think it's about. So we're, we're just leaving at 10 to 9 and uh, I think we're going to get there about 12.30. Straight back we're going to go the fastest route because our wiggly route wouldn't get us back in time um, so it's fairly straightforward back to Calais on the tunnel back home around the M25 bloody bloody blah but uh, we've had a great time everybody's enjoyed themselves we haven't had any mishaps uh, as far as I know which is always a good thing so we're about uh, 15 kilometers into the trip back to Calais we're on the D1 for those interested Heading towards St Quentin, the town, not the prison. As you can hear, I'm still pretty hay fevered up. So apologies if it's all a bit, uh, a bit nasally. I apologise. Give me some feedback on what you think. Uh, oh, oh, we're off. Uh, let's put that down. Let me know what you think of the uh, footage on the new Hero 7, you know, forward-facing helmet camera. Oh, I should say a big thanks to Wayne ahead for uh, route guiding on occasions when my sat-nav and uh, other days when he's fancied uh, when I haven't fancied leading, that's great. But here we are back at the Calais Tunnel. Made good time. 10 to 1 local time. Right. 
And for those of you who'd like to know roughly how much this trip has cost, excluding the Euro Tunnel, which was about £45, £46 each way, plus petrol, plus drinks. Uh, so the accommodation, which is 13 nights, hotel, dinner, bed and breakfast, all organised, pay your cheque, turn up and go, was approximately £1,200 for a shared room. Obviously it'll be slightly more, I think it came out about 1450 if you wanted uh, a single room. So uh, I think that's really good value for money for a 13 night trip and uh, hope, hope and uh, finally just wanted to say big thanks to all of the uh, new subscribers to my channel really do appreciate it Set.